I just want to get the bad news out of the way first. So. To be honest, I really have no idea what happened. I took pictures of, I mean, videos and pictures, obviously, of this female. And I sent it to my seahorse guru. And no idea, actually, uh, looked totally healthy. This happened, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And looks looks fat, looks, I mean, I mean, just looks healthy. And, and I found her, I, I was counting them all up. And I found her, well, this has grown a lot, but she was tucked behind this, just lying on her side. And I was like, you can't be dead. Like, why would you, why would you be dead? But unfortunately she died and no understanding as to why I tested everything. Everything was totally fine. So I think it's just one of those things that who knows what happened because then look, we have our super healthy ones here. I know you probably don't like me looking at you that close. So I still have three and they're happy. I'm just feeding them a little bit more now and I'm hoping that, you know, this doesn't happen again. I don't think it will. Who knows? Yikes, that's a little too close. So the reality of the situation is my guy who helps me with my tanks has been out for I think three weeks now. And to be to be honest, I have barely done anything. Very little actual maintenance. So take a peek. I mean, it's pretty obvious. begin because there's probably a good six, seven hours of work to do. But I think to get a baseline, I need to do a full range of water testing first. I'm not going to make you watch this. Here's a little time lapse of me testing one, two, three, four, five tanks. It is currently 11, 19 a.m. I bet you this takes me at least a couple hours. <laughs> Something. Hey, what time is it? It is 12.56, so that was over an hour and a half. Okay, here we go, ready? You ready to see the results? Here we go. Look, at, I haven't tested since, I to, uh, sorry, I can't do this, since 1.05, so it's been, what, over 10 days since I tested? And here, here's what I found out. Let's start with the seahorse tank. Seahorse tank, over, wait for it. Over there, seahorse tank, okay? Seahorse tank, nitrate 12.7. That's pretty high considering how much macroalgae is in there. I haven't trimmed the macroalgae in forever because I keep thinking that, that not trimming it is going to mean it's going to absorb more. But the last time I tested it, it was 8.5. So that's going up. Phosphate, 0.24, super high as well. And then calcium 400, alkalinity 7.3. So really it just needs a big water change. I am going to do a little trim, but really just a water change. I mean, I could probably put a protein skimmer on there, but... I don't really want to do that. Next up, we have the reef tank. This one I'm worried about. You saw probably at the beginning how gunky it was. It was so awful. All right, here we go. What do we got? Nitrate 28.4. That is getting up to where it might not be great for corals. And phosphate 0.11. Calcium 450. Alk 11.7. I am using the one part dose, the Tropic Marin. So I could probably turn that down just a skosh, but I think that's fine. I'm actually kind of surprised that the phosphate and nitrate aren't Aren't, aren't higher, to be honest. The skimmer must be helping. So I think a big water change there will help. I do have GFO, I do have GFO. So I think it's probably time to change out the GFO as well. Moving on to clownfish, harem tank, right behind me. Nitrate 12.2, phosphate 49. <laughs> look at that, wait, can you see? Look, look where I'm pointing. 
0.49. Wow, that is crazy. Maybe that's why the anemones aren't doing so well. Uh, calcium 420 and alk 7.7. I need to change the the uh, GFO. I, I I don't honestly know what it is. I guess I have a lot of fish in there. I, I I don't think the protein skimmer's working very well, to be totally honest. So maybe that's part of the problem. Okay, we're gonna go this way. Now we're on to the puffer fish. This has only, only been set up for a few weeks. Puffer fish, what do we got? 8.2 nitrate, phosphate 0.08. Those are like perfect. Nitrate's a little high, but not terrible. 400 calcium, 7.1 alkalinity. Water change and scenery of puffer fish is gonna be fine. And then lagoon tank right over there. That's gonna be bad. Nitrate 8.7, phosphate. <laughs> Wait, look at this. See that? Is he gonna focus? 0.67. <laughs> so high. I'm gonna take care of that. Calcium 440, ALK 10.2. I'm too poor two part dosing that still. So really the moral of the story is I gotta do some really big water changes on all these. Let's go one tank at a time. One tank at a time. Seahorse macro tank, first up. The phosphates and nitrates, the, nit the, pho the phosphates especially were super high. I was gonna do a lot of trimming on the grass area right here and you could just see, I mean, look how much the codium has been growing. It has been growing leaps and bounds. And finally, even this grape, I don't know, I don't know the name of this one, but the grape one has been growing uh, ton and it's finally growing up i cut out all the dead stuff and not only that but oh my gosh the uh prolifera the calerpa the only one that's legal here in california it is growing so much and you can see all the little the little buds that are coming off of it but on the surface here all these white things these are flatworms so I'm just gonna try to get as many of them off as I can. And I'm also gonna double check the phytoplankton because that's gonna be adding a lot of nutrients in to make sure I'm actually dosing the right amount there. But other than that, that's my wife right there. She's outside working. I'm not gonna make you watch everything that I'm doing. Let's just get to work. Mushroom. Sorry, not the mushroom. The sponge. The inside. I mean, I, I, I tried scraping this off, but I just couldn't. I think the phosphates are just so high. You can see, oh, it's starting to die back here. See that? See that? And then here's, oh yeah, here's the one that's super dead. Look at that. Come on, macro land. You're supposed to work off from here. Yeah. I just cut that off. I don't know if that's good or not. I mean, it's very spongy. Look at that. I mean, <laughs> I know it's a sponge, but like it's literally a sponge. And then look at this. Look at this nonsense. Ready? That's some of it. Look at this. Oh, I thought this was just going to be like a small trim. That is so much. And I think there are some... I thought there was a snail or two in here. This is good stuff, but look at this. I don't think I have a home for it. Could take some of this and I could put some into really any other tank, but really those two tanks, the harem tank and the uh, the, the Toby tank. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll just keep some of this. Oh wait, snail, see? I knew there was a snail on here. They just hang on really well. There's one. There's gotta be more, right? Let's see. I wanna get rid of the snails. All right, I'm gonna save some of this, but I mean, look at this. Look how much this is. And there's still high nitrates and phosphates. If I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna have to do the rubble rock method. I think that's the only way to do that. And I think this is probably, yeah, let's just use this, let's use this. This will work fine. I'm trying to find some big pieces, like decent, Decent sized pieces. That's decent. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Look at that. That's a good size. That's a good size. Come on, Matthew. You can do that. There we go. That's a good size. Oh, yeah, look at that one. Woo! That's a good one. Probably good enough. Purple tank first. Purple tank first. Purple tank, purple, 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 purple tank first. Let's do this one. It's just That's probably easy. Let's just do that. I am always terrible at this for some unknown reason. I don't know why. But I am. 
If you're wondering, Matthew, why are you doing this? It's because you can't just glue this onto the rock. It won't, it won't work. And you can stick it in crevices, but um, the new rock that I have just doesn't really have many, many crevices. So it's just gonna end up getting out and floating around. So I'm just gonna take a large piece like I have here, tie it around the rock, maybe on the first try, which never happens, I tie it. Doesn't have to be like crazy tight. No, oh, come on, Matthew. I hear you. And then that should be. So now I can just go put this into the tank. And we're good. I think I'm just gonna put it right down here. Please don't bite me, Mr. Puffer. You're not gonna be a big fan of this, are you? There, that'll help suck up some of those nitrates. Problem I found with this Gorgonian, as here, I mean, take a look at these ones. Like, see how, how much those polyps are out? And then same with this one right here. These ones, for a while, looked, it looked like this one. But I was able to scrape off the algae and then the polyps came out. But this one, for whatever reason, was unable to. So you can see the algae's taken over. And there's a couple spots like down near the base where the polyps are trying, see that, see right there? The polyps are trying to come out, but I've just lost this battle and it's been slowly, slowly dying. See that, see the polyps are like, please. I'll have to try again on another one. It's a shame, it's a shame, it was a good piece. Ooh, check out that little piece. I did not add that macro algae right there, but that is just some serious bubble algae. Normally I would get rid of it, but it just looks so good in this tank. And why would I get rid of it in a macro algae tank? I mean, just look at it. Look how gorgeous it is there. Good, beautiful, big piece. That's like my pride and joy. Well, not really, but I do like it though. It's nice. That was a pretty good sized trim actually. I think it looks a lot better.